Hey everybody, what's going on? Today I'm going to be reviewing another movie. And those of you who watch my videos, whenever I do a movie review, I tend to offer a much different opinion than what a lot of people think of a certain movie. And that's and it's going to be no different for the movie that I'm going to review today. And that movie, as you've guessed already, is Terminator Salvation. The fourth movie to be released in the highly popular Terminator franchise. Now, let me start off by saying that the first two Terminator movies are some of the are some of the greatest sci-fi movies I've ever seen in my life. The first two movies in the Terminator series they they have such there there's the first two movies I really consider them both to be just one movie. I really consider them both to be just one continuous story, just separated into two movies. And it's a story, it's a story of high excitement. It's a story of, you know, the strength of the human will. It's the, it's the story of the will of humanity to survive and to persevere against the oppression of a synthetic menace. And it's also a story that talks about how that the future is not set in stone, that we have the ability to change it, that, you know, we're, our fates are not predestined, that we can, we can do something to make the future better and brighter, and we can change everything. We can change our destinies. Nothing is set in stone. And that's what makes the first two Terminator movies so great and so captivating. Is that it's a story, you know, the first two movies present a story of action, drama, hopelessness, but also the strength of free will and just the strength of humanity. That's what makes, that's why so many people really love the first two Terminator movies. But it also is the main reason why I believe that the third Terminator movie is just a really, uh, it's really a huge, just a really huge letdown. Because at the end of the first, at the, at the end of the second Terminator movie, they, there was just no way they could have followed up with a sequel. There was just no, simply no freaking way. Because they ended Judd, they prevented Judgment Day from happening. You know, they destroyed Cyberdyne system, the Cyberdyne systems. They left no traces of the Terminators or any traces of Skynet. They left none of they left none of that intact so that Skynet could rise to power and, you know, destroy the world. They prevented all of that from happening. But yet somehow in the third movie, the US Air Force is able to, to recreate Skynet and recreate Judgment Day. They just they don't offer any sort of precise explanation as to how. They just do it. They just do it because as basically Hollywood was getting lazy in 2003 wanting to make everything into trilogies and so they decided to, you know, even though the second Terminator movie was like 12 years old at the time that th the third movie came out. They decide, hey, what the hell? Everybody loves the Terminator movie, so let's bring that let's bring that franchise back somehow. Let's not put any thought into how we would make a third Terminator movie. But no, let's just rehash what happened in the first two movies. That's exactly what they did, and because of that, I really hate the third movie in the series. But this movie, however. This movie, Terminator Salvation, I really like this movie a lot. Um, is it the best in the series? No, not even close. Uh, but I will say that uh, it's, this movie doesn't really complicate the series mythology a whole lot. Because, you know, you had the TV show, the Sarah, Chron the Sarah Connor Chronicles, that just really provided a lot of pointless exposition and just a lot of inform information that really complicated the storyline of the movie series a whole lot more than it needed to be. But this movie, it doesn't really do that. This movie does 
this movie does something that we've wanted to see that re we've wanted to see forever which which is to have it set during the future war between the humans and the machines and the main character Marcus Wright played by Sam Worthington is actually was actually sort of the the original brute blueprint for the human terminators they explained that he was sort of the guinea pig that Skynet used to create the basis for the T-800s, the, the human terminators that would use synthetic skin. It answers a lot of those questions as to how Skynet, how Skynet sort of went from using bare bones terminators to actual highly sophisticated human looking terminators that look, that look human. I think it provides a great explanation as to how they do that. And also, a lot of people really hate Christian Bale's performance as John Connor, but I actually don't, I, I really don't mind it. I, I really don't think that a lot, that anything that Bale does in his performance as Connor really sort of contradicts anything that the character in the, in the previous movies does. Uh, this movie sort of details John Connor's first. It details his his like beginnings as a soldier in the war against the machines, and he's portrayed as being very heroic. He's portrayed as being a uh, very selfless, you know, like John Connor should be. That's you know that's the way that the savior of humanity should be. He should be selfless. He should be heroic, and he should also doubt himself, which he does a lot here. Because he re he realizes the responsibility, the responsibilities of being the so-called savior of humanity, of being the leader of the resistance. And you know, I think Tr Christian Bale nails that performance of showing us just how much stress and how much pressure he's really under, that he's not really accepted by his military superiors, and that he's constantly arguing and bickering with them. I think that. That provides a very good conflict and a very good uh, dimension to his character. And also at the same time, the John Connor character goes through a lot of development because he has the preconceived notion, you know, because of the first three movies, well, maybe not the first. He has sort of the preconceived notion that a lot of the Terminators, maybe with the exception of the T-800s, uh, that that were augmented and sent back in time to help him are all ruthless killing machines. And whenever he meets up with Marcus Wright, you know, he's, he's, sort, he's sort of reminded of the Terminator that he befriended in the, in, the in the second and third movies. And... You know, I'm not going to say that this movie is perfect, because it's not, you know. There's, there's some real hiccups in the writing. Um, you know, the plot, the plot is, the storyline is very, very predictable. Um, the char a lot of the other characters are just not really interesting. They sort of come off as being bland. But, you know... I liked this movie. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. I think that it answered a good bit of the questions. It and it sort of uh, damn it. What was that one? Oh yeah, one thing I really loved and I noticed right off the bat is that uh, there's something that Kyle Reese in this movie. Uh, Marcus actually teaches Kyle Reese this little trick with a gun that I, that I remember him actually imitating in the uh, original Terminator movie. I can't exactly, I can't remember what exactly he does, but it was very cool to see how Kyle Reese actually learns that for the first time. Um, the action scenes were amazing. I'm not even going to lie, but I think the action scenes in this movie were definitely on par with the, were definitely on par from the, you know, the high adrenaline action scenes that people would expect from the Terminator movies. But the one thing that this movie gets absolutely right is the themes of 
are the themes of the strength of the human will is the fact it really gets right the whole nature the whole thing that separates the humans from Skynet from the machines is the fact that the machines kill indiscriminately that they that they are dedicated to being perfect and they're dedicated to wiping out humanity and inheriting the earth as their own uh, they don't they don't really care if one of their own gets killed and murdered they don't really care they don't really care how much they have to sacrifice in order to achieve their victory and they i think this movie does a good job of showing of showing how the humans are different from that and showing how john connor stands up to his superiors thinking that they think that he thinks that his superiors are acting too much like the machines that they're you know they're determined to that they're willing to actually sacrifice human lives and that they're willing to carry out orders without question carry out incredibly risky orders without question that may endanger the entire resistance army but it's not even that that really amazed me. It's the ending where uh, Marcus has to has to sacrifice himself by transplanting his heart, and the ending monologue was brilliant. I loved it. The whole thing where Marcus does the does the whole narration of what is it that makes a man a man? I can't exactly remember how he does it, but I remember that he basically establishes the greatness of the value of human life and I think that this was this was touched upon at the ending of the second Terminator movie where Arnold sacrifices himself but he learns the value of human life and that's what I think makes this movie so great is that it stays completely consistent with the themes and the moral tones of the first two movies that's what I think makes this movie really good that's what I think makes this movie a great successor to the first two movies in the series. I really hope that I'm really wanting to see the further Terminator movies that they do as a follow-up to this one. I think that this movie as a new series has a lot of potential. It has a lot of potential to sort of answer more of the questions and bring a much more epic and satisfying conclusion to the entire Terminator saga. I want to see more of these movies and I and I think that this I really don't care what the majority says. I think that this movie was very very good. But that's my opinion though. Goodbye.